Honourable members, the Speaker. Almighty God, we humbly beseech thee to vouchsafe thy blessing upon this Parliament. Direct and prosper our deliberations to the advancement of thy glory and the true welfare of the people of Australia. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Order. I wish to report to the House that I have received a copy of the message from Her Majesty the Queen and the speech of His Excellency the Governor-General delivered earlier today in the Great Hall to mark the inaugural sittings of the two Houses in this building. In order that there may be a full written report record of today's proceedings, I propose that they be incorporated in Hansard. The Honourable Prime Minister. Madam Speaker, I move that this House expresses its thanks and appreciation to the parliaments, governments and peoples of those countries, states and territories and to those organisations which have so graciously presented gifts to Australia's new Parliament House and extends a warm welcome to those presiding officers and representatives who are present today. Madam Speaker, on the historic first sitting day in this building, I should like to take the opportunity to express the appreciation of the Parliament, the Government and the people of Australia to the Parliaments, Governments and peoples of those countries, states and territories and those organisations which have generously presented gifts to Australia's new Parliament House. It is particularly pleasing that representatives of many of those donors, including the presiding officers of other Parliaments, are able to be with us in the House today. The internal spaces of the building now display the embroideries, tapestries, paintings, maps and other gifts sent here from the four corners of the world and the four corners of Australia. They are already part of this building's own history. And of course, outside the building we see sculptures, benches and trees presented by our friends to add to our enjoyment when we escape our duties within these walls. It's appropriate, Madam Speaker, that I make special mention of the gifts located within this chamber. The chamber table made in Australia to the Parliament House architect's design was sponsored by the Canadian House of Commons. And the Hansard table is a gift from the state of South Australia. All these gifts will remind us and future generations of parliamentarians of our international ties, our bonds with the Australian states, and, Madam Speaker, the responsibility that we owe to the Australian people to cherish and preserve our system of parliamentary democracy. In expressing my thanks to those who join us for this special day and to those who have presented gifts, I believe they share our pride in this great building. Their generosity indicates the respect in which Australia's system of parliamentary democracy is held and which will prosper in these new surroundings. The question is the motion be agreed to. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Uh, Madam Speaker, uh, the Liberal and National Parties uh, join the Prime Minister and uh, the members of the government in expressing thanks to people in Australia and around the world and organisations and nations that have contributed gifts to mark the opening of the new Australian Parliament. They will over time add to the character and the history of this building and the enormous number of countries uh, which have presented gifts that clearly demonstrates the enormous impact and interest that this building and its completion 
and its scope and its size has created around the world. A wide range of organisations, uh, including such uh, Australian bodies as the Country Women's Association, the National Australia Day Council, the RSL, the War Widows Guild, the Australian Embroiderers and many other organisations have representing ordinary Australians going about uh, their ordinary lives uh, have been presented and uh, the opposition joins very much in thanking those people for the contribution they have made. May I say, Madam Speaker, as we are talking about gifts, there is one gift that I regret we cannot talk about today in a positive sense, and that was the gift of the United Kingdom Parliament of the establishment of the Parliament House in 1927. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I think it is a matter of very great regret that that particular Order. gift, but in time I can assure the House, uh, Madam Speaker, that that gift will be returned to its rightful place in this chamber. The question is the motion be agreed to. Order. The Right Honourable Leader of the National Party. Madam Speaker, this is a house as yet still into which we all need to settle. It's a forum where some might survive, others will not. I think the important part about the institution and the motion the Prime Minister has moved is that the institution itself is a gift from another country. We've inherited the parliamentary system of the United Kingdom. Our constitution translated that into the constitution of the Commonwealth. And within this parliament, the third house of the members of the Australian Parliament, it will be translated into interpreting the will of the people on behalf of the people in the democratic system to which we belong. So the first and most significant thanks that I would extend in supporting the Prime Minister's motion, Madam Speaker, is to the British nation for having passed on to us <coughs> the traditions of parliamentary democracy. The, over the last few months, there's no doubt that so many have also contributed to making this building something more than just an architect's dream. Both the Prime Minister and the Leader of the Opposition have listed some of those who have made specific contributions. I think the important thing about those contributions is that they really are reflections of the way in which the people of the world and the people of Australia are brought together through this place. <coughs> this place is a forum where we express on behalf of all Australian people the views and attitudes we have to international affairs, the views and attitudes we have to affairs within our own country, and we interpret and listen to those views that might be sent to us from abroad. And in the People around Australia and people from abroad have contributed to making this house what it is. I think all of us owe thanks to them, and perhaps in turn we can give thanks by continuing to be a positive member of the international community. But this house will never be memorable. It will never be a place within which a positive contribution can be made towards good government in Australia unless we are prepared to interpret through those gifts and through our own, own gift of democracy to other countries some of the hope and some of the opportunity that is an essential of, within Australia. We are fortunate in so many of the aspects of our democracy. Others, sadly, are not. And perhaps in turn, in thanks for what has been given to us, we can pass on to others some of the hopes for freedom, some of the hopes for the freedom of speech, freedom of religion, and those essences which came to us from Great Britain, and in, in no doubt will be able, in perhaps the best way, to say thank you for those who have been generous to us. On behalf of the National Party, Madam Speaker, I share totally in the sentiments of the Prime Minister and Leader of the Opposition. The question is, the motion be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. Of the contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. The Honourable Prime Minister. Madam Speaker, I move that this House extends its sincere thanks to the following persons and organisations associated with the planning and construction of the new Parliament House. First. Mitchell Gogola and Thorpe, architects who designed it, to the Parliament House Construction Authority, Concrete Holland Joint Venture, and all contractors and workers who built it. Three, the artists, craftsmen and craftswomen who advised on and assisted in its furnishing and decoration. And four, 
the members of the Joint Select Committee on the New and Permanent Parliament House, all past and present members of the Joint Standing Committee on the New Parliament House, officers of the National Capital Development Commission, parliamentary and other staff for their endeavours in providing a magnificent permanent building for the Parliament of the Commonwealth of Australia. Madam Speaker, the care and the dedication that has gone into the construction of this building gives us a lasting debt of gratitude to all those men and women who have been involved. To the architects Romaldo Gagola and Richard Thorpe, we say thank you for your vision in designing a building of which all Australians, present and future, can be justly proud. We thank also the chairman, members and the chief executive of the Parliament House Construction Authority and their staff for their hard work and dedication throughout the construction phase of the building. To Concrete Holland Joint Venture, the construction manager, and all the other contractors and the workers involved in the project who by the labour of their mind and bodies have made it the remarkable reality it is, we also express our gratitude. We also recall the work which has been done by the members of the Joint Select Committee on the New and Permanent Parliament House, officers of the National Capital Development Commission and parliamentary and other staff in the building. The clerks must indeed feel relief today that after so much planning, these, ceremon these ceremonies are taking place at last. The new Parliament House embodies the work of over 10,000 men and women with contributions from individuals and manufacturers from every state and territory. It is a national showcase demonstrating the skills and the energy of the Australian workforce. Madam Speaker, the integration of Australian art and craft into the new Parliament House is a key part of the building's architectural expression. The artists, craftsmen and craftswomen, have created significant works now displayed throughout the building. The Meeting Place Mosaic, designed by Papunya artist Michael <coughs> Nelson Jacamara and fabricated by Masons William McIntosh, Aldo Rossi and Franco Colosi, stands in the centre of the ceremonial pool at the heart of the forecourt and is appropriately the first work of art visitors see when approaching this building. In the Great Hall, the tapestry by 14 weavers of the Victorian Tapestry Workshop dramatically depicts an Australian coastal landscape created from paintings by Arthur Boyd. In the first floor public gallery, the embroidery <coughs> designed by South Australian artist Kay Lawrence and produced by more than 1,000 members of the Embroiderers Guild of Australia, narrates the history of Australians' involvement with the land. The marquetry designed by South Australian Tony Bishop and interpreted by Sydney craftsman Michael Retter can be found in the cabinet entry waiting room, the cabinet room itself, the formal entrance foyer and in your chair, Madam Speaker. There are many more craftspeople and artists who have contributed to the national character of the new Parliament House. Tasmanian woodworker Kevin Perkins and others who have handcrafted tables and desks for the use in principal suites. Other important works of Australian woodcraft include the King's Table in the reception hall and display cases in the foyer exhibiting constitutional documents. Madam Speaker, we could continue enumerating at length for wherever we look, we see work worthy of praise. I am sure, Madam Speaker, that for many months to come, we shall continue to discover new delights as we move around the new building. To all those who work to give us this home for our parliament, I express my sincere thanks. I hope that many Australians will have the opportunity to share our gratitude and indeed excitement when visiting this Parliament House. Question is the motion be agreed to. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Madam Speaker, the, uh, the Opposition uh, again joins the Prime Minister in expressing uh, on our behalf uh, thanks to all of those who have been involved 
in the original concept of the design and the construction of this new Parliament House. More than 10,000 people have been involved in the construction of the Parliament House. It has been the largest construction work in the Southern Hemisphere. It is, as the Prime Minister said, a tribute to the workmanship and the skill and the vision of Australians from many walks of life. We owe a lot to the original design concept. It's worth recalling the words of the former Prime Minister in November 1978 when he said, and I quote, it will be the centre point of the modern Canberra, the peak of the parliamentary triangle, the hub of the government of the Commonwealth of Australia, a place in which the affairs of the nation can be conducted in a more efficient way. The new Parliament House symbolises our unity as a nation and as a people and is an expression of our joint pride, faith and confidence in Australia. I think those words would represent the views of all members of this chamber, particularly on this uh, opening day in the new parliamentary session. Those of us, and uh, there are many who served um, through um, the middle 1970s and early uh, when the debate was raging over whether or not to have a new parliament building, will remember the intensity of that debate and at various stages, uh, many would have imagined that this day would never come about. And I think all of us would have to be honest and concede that there was an enormous range of opinion varying from those who were dedicated with unremitting zeal to having a new parliament to those who are utterly committed to the preservation in some form or another of the old building. It has to be said that whatever the merits of that <laughs> argument, uh, what has been produced and what we're in now is a remarkable Australian achievement. It is a remarkable compliment to the architects. It's a remarkable compliment to uh, the Parliament House Construction Authority and it's a remarkable compliment to the men and women uh, who worked on the site. And to all of those people and on behalf of all of the members uh, of the Liberal Party, uh, can I express um, our thanks. Can I also, on behalf of the Liberal Party, express the hope that the aspirations and confidence of the people of Australia about the quality of government and of opposition in this building will, over the years ahead, be fulfilled, and that in time this building will generate and transmit the feeling of affection and nostalgia that three generations of Australian politicians developed for the building down below us. On behalf of the Liberal Party and on behalf of the opposition, I uh, warmly endorse the Prime Minister's remarks and thanks to those associated with the building. The question is the motion be agreed to. The Right Honourable Leader of the National Party. Madam Speaker, I'd like to support the motion moved by the Prime Minister and seconded by the Leader of the Opposition. Winston Churchill, in commenting on the checks and balances of the Westminster parliamentary system, said it's not Parliament that should rule. It's the people who should rule through Parliament. A few of you over that side would remember it occasionally from the sound of it. I think the important part about this building has been both its concept, its funding and the people who've built it. And uh, I think we've got a few Australian taxpayers out there who should share with us in a pride at the achievement of this building. It's truly a tremendous complex and I think of all of us need to thank them for providing the funds from which it was built. I think, secondly, we should thank all those who, through your office, Madam Speaker, and that of Mr President, have been implemental in making, instrumental in making sure that uh, the uh, decisions of the various authorities have been put into place, and to the clerks, and to the deputy clerks, and to Don Piper, who is director of the new Parliament House Secretariat, I'd like to say particular thanks and congratulations. They certainly have been very instrumental in trying to translate the wishes of a disparate group of senators and parliamentarians into reality in this place. The architects have certainly had an enormous challenge. I think all of us have views about uh, some of those things we like and others perhaps we don't quite so like about this place. But individually, <laughs> they have come up with what is, I understand, one of the largest in area, at least buildings, at least in the Southern Hemisphere. It's a tremendous concept and however it might have been described, it's certainly one which is going to serve this nation well 
that is subject to the performance of those of us within it, they have provided the framework. It is now for us to carry out our duties in the same exemplary manner that they have displayed. Then to the constructors, the Concrete Holland Joint Venture, David Chandler as the construction director, and the members of the 10,000 strong workforce, the subcontractors and the workers themselves, Rod Driver and Peter Berry of the BWIU, they and all their members have made an enormous difference to this place for it to have been built on time, to be opened as scheduled and in our bicentennial year is a tremendous accomplishment and I think all of us pay them due, due tribute. The Parliament House Construction Authority, the original board, Bernie Callanan, Sir John Overall, Bob Ling, Tony Powell and Neil McPhillamy, and then the second board under Alex Morokov. Each of those boards and their members and the executives who served with them have contributed enormously to translate the concept into reality. And then the artists and the craftsmen. The Prime Minister and the Leader of the Opposition have spoken briefly of them. Michael Chakamara Nelson, Arthur Boyd, David Upfield Brown, Bernie Coker, Gordon Andrews, Robin uh, Rill Hinwood, Peter Travis, Paul Harvey, and I could go on. All within their responsibilities have made this place a reality. And while I think each of us would see some parts of it that uh, perhaps we might have liked to do differently, what they have done is produce a magnificent Parliament House. We pay them due tribute and, as I say, would only wish that those who live and work within this place can, same, can maintain the same high standards of excellence as we perform our duties. The question is the motion be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. Of the contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. The Honourable Leader of the House. Mr Speaker, I move that the House at its rising adjourn until tomorrow at 2 p.m. The question is the motion be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. Of the contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. Mr. Speaker, I move the House to now adjourn. Question is the House. To, we did that. We did do that bit. Question is the House to now adjourn. Those of that opinion say aye. Of the contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. The House stands adjourned until 2 p.m. tomorrow, in accordance with the resolution agreed to this day.